You ready? Yes. Hello everybody. My name is Anmol Bering. Today is March 20th, 2024. And today's lecture will be continuation of visual testing of the welds. I had a lecture on March 15 in which I actually showed you the process. Today will be the actual demonstration of the gauges and to take the measurements while the welding is done. So this is the basic flow chart for the visual inspection of the welds. The first step is to review the welding procedure specification and that welding procedure specification which is called the WPS will define how the welding will be done. It will give you the material specs, the weld parameters, the weld preparation, bevel angle, misalignment uh, allowed, and it will also define the acceptance criteria for the final weld. It will just have a one-liner, like what code to use. Once we, we take the, uh, then we take these measurements, which is the bevel angle, make sure they are acceptable to start the welding. Then the welding begins here and then the welding after the welding is done we check for the weld profile which would be the basically the reinforcement of the weld and to make sure there is no misalignment during the welding process once the profiles have been checked and also for the fillet weld we would be checking for uh, the leg size and also check for if there if the throat is enough or if it is insufficient throat for the concave welds then we look for discontinuities and discontinuities uh, could be the ones which are automatic reject which could be like cracks so they will be automatic reject right here and there will be other discontinuities which you will require to take measurements for example undercut and in that case you actually use the gauges to take those measurements porosity and, and those and then after that to see if they are actually apply the code and see if they are acceptable or they actually are rejectable. So this kind of gives you a summary of the flow chart for inspection. And then we go to the WPS, which is right here. And this is called the welding procedure specification. The WPS will have a number right here and it will refer to a PQR procedure qualification. And this WPS will give you all the specific information for the welding that has to be carried out, which would mean the pipe diameter or the plate. Uh, so in this case, it's pipe. It'll give you the diameter, the thickness, the pipe material and grade, the welding method to be used. In this case is GMAW, current, volts, travel speed, shielding gas, position, welding position 5G, filler metal electro diameter say one millimeter a trade name of the electrode and then the welding equipment to be used preheat temperature backing material in some cases we use copper pads so then it will give you the joint design for the welding which will be here the bevel angle a the land b this radius here c and if there is any root opening allowed or not allowed in this case it says uh, not allowed fit up without root gap so it means zero and maximum misalignment allowed is 1.0 millimeter between this side and this side and it will give you at the end the acceptance criteria to be used for the discontinuities and it will give you the code name which will be very specific here with the addition also the WPS has to be prepared and then signed and dated at the very bottom so now we will go through the process of this uh, measurement and the first thing first one is actually to check for the bevel angle which is here and in this case we use a bridge cam gauge we just put it here like this and kind of put it like this and the angle uh, will show up on hold on this way so the angle will show up here as you can see it's uh, showing up right here. So this is 30 degrees, so it shows up right here. And that's the bevel angle. So that will be the first measurement we take to make sure the bevel ang angle is in compliance. And then after that, we go to the, to make sure about the misalignment. 
So here are two plates, which actually I'm showing them as misaligned. So, and in this case we use, again we use the bridge cam gauge to check for the misalignment and it will be here and it will show up on the, right here it will show up, the misalignment will, will read at this uh, here, right here. It can, so we can measure the misalignment with the bridge cam gauge as well as the VVAC gauge, which is right here, which is another way of doing it. So again, we put it here and then put connect, uh, dip it right here. And then the measurement will come on the, on this side. So the misalignment is here. And then after that, the welding is done. And once the welding is completed, we will check for the reinforcement of the, the weld here. And uh, just to go back, let me show you the steps which, which I'm following. And the steps are here. One more time, we did the bevel angle we already did. We checked for the misalignment using the bridge cam gauge or the VVAC gauge. And then the welding is done right here. And after the welding is done, we will check for the weld uh, reinforcement and also check for any uh, misalignment after the welding. So for that, here is the welding is complete. And then we go back and check for the measure the weld uh, cap reinforcement by putting the gauge like this and we get the size, uh, the reinforcement on the top. Or we can use this gauge here also for the uh, weld reinforcement. So that's another way of measuring it. So there's many gauges are available. And once that is done, then the next step is to give you a demonstration of the, for the fillet weld, the leg size. And uh, it's right here. The best way to do these uh, fillet weld inspection is to use a go-no-go -no -go gauge. And in this case, if the fillet size is supposed to be 3 eighths of an inch, we use a 3 eighths inch size fillet gauge, put it here. And you can see that the size is more than the 3 eighths inch on the top side, the vertical side. And for the horizontal side, we actually uh, extend this line here, uh, which is right here. And we extend the line going down to make sure it is, it is actually the uh, size is, meets the requirement. That's for the convex fillet. And for the concave, we actually go here. This is the concave. And in this case, we take this gauge, we flip it like this, and we put it here. And you can see that there is a light gap there uh, where the throat is supposed to be touching. And that means it is unacceptable. So there should be no light gap in this case. So for the convex, we, use, we measure the size, the leg size, and for the concave, we measure that we don't measure it actually we use a go no go gauge to check if the throat is sufficient or insufficient so this is what we do for the fillet welds now these measurements can be taken with the these gauges also like this gauge can be used to measure the leg size and also you can make you can convert this gauge actually to a go no go gauge by setting up uh, the, this here so you can set up the throat size on this here and make it a go no go gauge and then actually just come in here and you know measure the throat from here so that, that's a, another way of doing it and uh, for example this one is actually I set it up for a 3 8 here you check for the throat and see if there's a sufficient throat or not so then the final one is to measure the discontinuity which is one example here undercut so in this case we can again use a bridge cam gauge to put it here and kind of take the measurement of the undercut just like this right this here it will give you the depth and the, or you can use a VVAC gauge right here and take the measurement and take the reading on the right side here. So 
and this kind of and this one this gauge is for the high low and really it's used if you are measuring the high low on the id of the pipe so you kind of stick it in between so you stick it in like this on the opposite side and then you rotate it by 90 degrees and then if there is a high low you can actually it will kind of show up here and then you can take the measurement up there so kind of gives you an idea of the different types of gauges uh, but uh, basically you can see that I have a summary of the measurement gauges here the the bridge cam gauge can be used for butt weld bevel angle misalignment reinforcement for the fillet it can be used for the leg size and the insufficient throat and then again this example for the fillet gauge which is a go no go gauge can only be used for the fillet welds and it's actually uh, it can be used for the size leg size for the convex fillet and then for the insufficient throat for the concave uh, fillet welds so kind of gives you a summary of all the measurements to be made and the measurement gauges which are all here so it seems to be a little bit complicated but really all you need is like three gauges like i showed you in this chart which would be the well you need a ruler and then the best is the bridge cam gauge is a good one to have and the vvac gauge is also has a pointed tip here so that's good for measuring the depth of any discontinuity because of its pointed edge and it's it's light to carry and they are not that expensive so thank you very much for your kind attention and we will continue on the next ndt topic uh, as we go on thank you